way the sanctuary got started is uh, the two founders, Shalene and Shilpi Shaw, were, um, they basically, they started by rescuing a horse named Holly. And Holly came from an abuse and neglect situation. Mm -hmm. And they rescued her from that, and that was, she was actually their first companion animal. Um, never had a cat or a dog before, but decided to start with a horse. And uh, after they rescued Holly, they wanted to rescue more horses. Um, so they started going into uh, slaughter houses and rescuing horses there. Um, and while they were in those slaughter houses, they saw all these other farmed animals being circulated through those slaughter houses and, or slaughter auctions. And they realized that there were a lot of other animals that were in need of rescue. And that really inspired them to start the sanctuary. I really like the way that, that, we, that we approach um, the issue here of creating a more compassionate world for farmed animals. Um, farmed animals probably suffer the most in our world and more than any other, more than companion animals, more than exotics, um, and there is something that should be done about that, so I've, yeah, I've been really driven to, to help. The issue with zoos is that they don't have the animal's best interest. Um, they're more for the public, entertainment, um, and sanctuaries really focus on the best interest of their residents, their non-human animal residents, and, um, and keeping them as healthy and as happy and giving them a, a, quality, a quality life. Um, so, I think that um, sanctuaries are doing that job and doing a good job in replacing zoos. Um, one other thing that sanctuaries offer um, is a lot of education about the animals. A lot of sanctuaries do tours um, instead of having people kind of wander around. Um, they're, they're led by someone who is very knowledgeable um, about the animals, about the plight of the animals, about how to um, help and really just like a good advocate for the animals. Um, so I think more and more people are are seeing some some of the injustices in our society and want to be part of the solution. Um, and coming to a sanctuary is is really a good way to do that. If you see an injustice. Um, know that you do have the power to do something about it. Um, we all have choices that we can make, and um, sometimes those choices aren't always the easiest at the time, but we definitely always have choices to be compassionate for the animals, to the animals, and um, I would just like everyone to remember that. My name is Erica Sotis, and currently here at Love and Arm Sanctuary, I lead tours educating people about the animals. Fun. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> That's he Teddy. That beautiful sheep is Teddy. Oh, oh, sweet, smart, funny. <laughs> it's not a scratching post. Apparently, we found what he really wants to be when he grows up. Yeah. Star. Okay. You are a star. I do really feel like they're my best friends. You know, we can communicate with non-human animals in such different ways because they're very um, instinctual and innocent and in the moment. And um, I think I really love Finn and Teddy. This is uh, Finn. That's Teddy. I really love them. Um, I love the goats. They're hilarious. I always say goats would be natural comedians. Um, and it's funny, you know, they're very personable, right? Um, the goats and... But I even have an affinity, and again, I could go on, and I feel bad, like I don't want to leave out my friends, the pigs, but you know, but I really do love in this moment, you know, with the sheep, because I'm with them, but there's one resident here that even though I don't like hang with him, like one-on-one, -on -one, I find him pure magic, is Walter. He's a turkey, have you met him yet? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know, but his head is a mood ring. Did you know that? 
did she tell you? His head actually turns colors from blue to red, depending on his mood. Oh. Um, and he's just like, the more you learn about turkeys, about how amazing and smart and funny they are, it's like, I just, I feel like I haven't seen him yet today, so like, I can't wait to go see him. <laughs> is where we talk about the industry practices that happen, happen to the not so lucky animals, whether it's for wool or beef or eggs. And um, I really would love to educate people to the cruelty that happens to the animals and um, inspire them to make choices that are more compassionate for the animals, compassionate for the earth, and um, compassionate for themselves, really, you know, to create a more compassionate world. That's the compassion. And for the connector, we hope, or I hope, to encourage humans, people, that um, there isn't really a difference between human, cat, dog, pig, cow. You know, all animals have feelings and personalities, you know, want to live and play and love. why these animals end up in sanctuaries is, is a complicated question, I feel like, um, and I feel it goes back to many years of um, suppressing other beings, and it's really become habit at this point um, for human society, I feel, and the importance of sanctuaries is to rescue these beings and then have people take, like stop, and take a deeper look and think critically about why this is happening, is it necessary, and what can we do about it to make a more just world. And I think the cause, um, it definitely comes from a history of, of habitual violence and suppression, which, um, you know, once you're aware of that and you're aware that that's not necessary and it's, um, and we have a different choice, we have another choice we can make um, that, um, yeah, you can do something about it and, and why not? So earlier you asked me um, if there is a funny story that I have from any of our residents here. And Tito, the guy who's walking away now, but he's a cow, um, he, what, he came to us from the dairy industry. He was uh, rescued there and from that. And he came to us at 10 days old. And he was really a puppy before he was a cow. Um, so when he was 10 days old, he still needed milk to survive. And so we would go into his stall every day, multiple times a day, and bring him his milk. And he would get so excited that he would jump up and down. And he would do what your dog does when you come home from work. They're really excited to see you. They jump up and then they jump on you and like give you kisses and stuff. And that's what Tito would do. And the reason why we can't go in with the cows now is because Tito had those, those first few months where he was a dog that he still sometimes acts like that and gets really excited when people come in and like tries to jump on them because he's so excited to see them. <laughs> of course it was cute when he was 70 pounds but now that he's near a thousand we have to be a little more careful but he he's mostly a cow now once he got integrated with the other cows he um he he really learned how to be a cow and he's like okay I'm not a dog I'm a cow but um still has very friendly, dog-like um, reactions sometimes. Um, our volunteers uh, especially come from, um, or come here because they're, they're seeking therapy in a way, and it's, there's a lot of like just natural animal therapy that goes on here from spending time with these guys. Um, and you know we've had we've had people that have 
really needed therapy that have come from you know traumatic situations in their lives and they come here and and they've told us that um, the animals are really really helping them because um, they do listen in I think a way that humans don't always <laughs> yeah they do so they are very good companions and, and very good um, just beings to like be around it's therapy in responding to what Alexa said. It's definitely therapy. Uh, being around the beings and the love and the presence and in the moment and that form of communication you can have without words. And uh, to feed my soul, really. Like to, I mean, it's so awesome. I just want to spend like all day here every day with them. And it just feels so good. Like I can't wait to come. Like the, the day before I'm coming, I'm like, oh my God. So yeah, so I think everyone would want to volunteer. You know, all these animals communicate. Like chickens have like 40 different words that they, they, they have. And we, I don't know the language. And goats as well, when they greet each other, you know, and it's bedtime. And I mean, the babies stand immediately after birth with goats and they're fascinating. These animals are fascinating. And there's really, um, yeah, and I just, I, I want to bring these animals, like, you know, so they have a voice. Yeah. Right? And, and by the sanctuaries, we, we invite people in so they can learn that.